Right, good day everyone. I hope uh, you're all doing well, uh, wherever you may uh, be watching from. Um, as you can see, I am uh, wearing my hat. Uh, this hat I always wear when I when I go out and administer uh, the Word of God. And one of the reasons why I'm, I'm wearing it um, in this video, and maybe in, in videos to come uh, uh, here on in uh, as well, is, is there's an in-house joke uh, going going on um, at this present time between myself and, and, and one of uh, the brethren uh, at the church. And um, he knows uh, what I'm referring to, so hence why uh, this hat has made an appearance uh, uh, in this video. So all joking uh, aside, if you like the hat, um, let us know. If you prefer no hat, um, then next message, maybe, maybe uh, we'll take it off. But uh, I just personally feel more comfortable uh, wearing my hat. You know, I wear my hat uh, most of the times, so like I wear my, wear my boots uh, everywhere I, I head out. Uh, I've got the hat on the head, whether it's this one or, or another one. So I thought, well, why not? Let's uh, put the hat on the head now as we open up the scriptures and, and have a look what the Lord has for us uh, in this particular message. So let's uh, let's start uh, firstly in the book of uh, 2 Timothy. Now, if you recall, and if you've been following along in, in uh, previous uh, videos, uh, last uh, video uh, we talked about uh, the Southern Cross and kind of uh, briefly paused from, from where we're heading uh, in these future uh, videos and talked about uh, the Southern Cross uh, and the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, concerning that. So now what we'll do, we'll go back to, to where we uh, started off. And to be honest with you, my main uh, intention uh, when it comes to, to putting these message, messages together while we uh, cannot have church, while we cannot uh, travel out uh, west uh, and minister the Word of God uh, out there, um, so let's uh, go to 2 Timothy and let's start here on in in verse number 7 of chapter 1. Now I have been told um, that I do go a little bit too fast uh, in turning to references and I will take that on board and I'll try and go a little bit slower uh, to give you folk an opportunity to be able to turn to those references and be able to read them uh, with me. So if I am going too fast, just yell out at the, at the camera or yell out at the, at the screen, however you're watching, saying you're going too fast, slow down. But I cannot um, give you assurance that I'm going to listen. Uh, you might just have to pause me and go from there. But nevertheless, I will try and slow down uh, with that. So 2 Timothy chapter 1, and look at verse number, number 7. Scriptures say, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. All right, so this is the, this is the whole uh, thought behind our messages uh, that we've done thus far, is this idea of how we can have a sound mind uh, during the midst of this coronavirus, during this time of uncertainty, during this time of uh, discouragement, um, despair, uh, distress, uh, whatever it may be. You know, the scriptures tell us that God has given us a sound mind. You know, the, the question for each of us today is, do we have that sound mind? Drop down in that same chapter and look at verse number 13. We're told here how we can have a sound mind. Verse 13 says, hold fast the form of what type of words? It says, hold fast the form of sound words. All right, so we saw in our previous message when we were looking at this thought, that if we are going to have a sound mind, we need to be thinking upon, we need to be meditating upon, we need to be feeding ourselves with sound words. Sound words will equal having a sound mind, which will then produce faith in our Christian lives. And what did we say faith stands for? It says forsaking everything I trust. Him. You know, we can have faith in the midst of this coronavirus. You know, how do we do that? How do we um, get those sound words into our heart and resulting in having a sound mind and which will then produce faith? Well, we said we need to we need to read. All right, very basic, very simple. We need to read the words. Not only do we need to read, but we need to meditate upon the words. We need to be thinking about them constantly and continually. Not only meditate, but then hide them in our hearts. You know, the psalmist tells us to hide the word of God in our heart there in Psalm 119. But we said that doing all those three things 
will equate to nothing or will result in nothing unless we believe the very words in which we're reading. Then it will produce an effectual work in us. And what's the work that we're trying to uh, be produced in our lives during this time? It is faith. That's what we need, being able to forsake everything and just trust uh, our Savior. So sound words equals a sound mind, which results in having faith. Whereas on the opposite hand, we said that if you focus on and if you um, meditate upon and are always exposed to and listening to shaky words in regards to words concerning the coronavirus, you know, we looked at some of those words that are associated with it, lockdown, virus, COVID-19, uh, isolation, uh, social distancing, all those things, and then eventually death. If we're, if we're meditating upon those words, if we're always reading upon those words, what's going to happen? There are those shaky words that are coming into our hearts and minds. It's going to result in a shaky mind. And as a result of that, what's it going to produce? It's going to produce fear. And we just read in that verse that God has not given us the spirit of fear. So as believers during this time, we should not be fearful. And what does fear stand for? Forsaking everything and retreating. You know, what we need during this time are, are, are Christians and their testimony uh, to, to Christians that may be weak in the faith or, or their testimony to, to their unsaved neighbors, to their unsaved uh, family members, to their unsaved workmates, whatever it may be. We need Christians today that have faith and not fear. All right, so that's kind of what we talked about in, in our previous message when it came to this topic about having a sound mind. And if you remember what I said I wanted to do in, in, in further videos and starting in this particular video is, is take the word coronavirus, you know, C-O-R-O-N-A-V-I-R-U-S. So 11 letters in the word coronavirus and I wanted to take uh, a, the, each letter and equate it with a Bible verse. So we take the letter C, in this message we're going to take the letter C and we're going to equate that with a Bible verse beginning with the letter C. So that when we uh, are continually um, bombarded with the coronavirus and things concerning that, we can think of coronavirus, we can think of the letter C, and what I want to come to mind in your lives and in my life it is not all those shaky words, but to give you some sound words uh, to meditate upon during that time to make sure that we continue to have that sound mind and we continue to have that faith uh, in our Savior. You know, in the last two messages, we, we built this foundation, we solidified it, the foundation, and now what I want us to do with these sound words in this message and in messages to come is to begin to build upon that foundation, to build on that uh, foundation that we've laid. And how do we build it? We build upon it with sound words. All right, let's go to First Peter now. First Peter chapter 5. And as we take the letter C uh, from coronavirus, this is the verse that uh, I want us to use uh, in this message. First Peter chapter 5 and drop down to verse Number seven, look what we read. It says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, it's words from the Apostle Peter. Uh, Peter wrote uh, this particular book and, and the next epistle as well. But Peter is, is stating this, this truth uh, in his letter uh, to the believers. And one of the reasons why the Apostle Peter can, can state this particular uh, verse uh, found in this passage is because he has learnt this in his life. All right? He has learnt this principle in his life. And as a result of learning it, he's now uh, giving it. Uh, to the believers here in this letter so that they may be able to be partakers uh, of the blessing that comes from being obedient to this verse as he has witnessed or as he has learned in his Christian life. So let's, before we look at the verse, let's have a look at how the Apostle Peter learnt this verse in his life 
and how he was able to put it into, into practice. So let's start now in the book of Matthew. If you like, you can leave a bookmark or a finger there in, in the book of uh, 1 Peter, uh, chapter 5. We, we will return there after we've uh, looked at these couple of examples. So look at the Gospel of Matthew uh, firstly. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew uh, chapter 14. And if you drop down uh, to verse uh, 27... Now, uh, the context of, of this story, uh, of this passage, is that uh, the, the disciples are out there uh, on the sea, and they're out uh, on the sea on a ship, and in the, they are in the midst of a terrible storm. All right, they're out there. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is not out there on the ship with them, but the disciples are out there on their own, and they're out there, uh, like I said, in the midst of, of this storm. So let's uh, pick it up now in verse number 27. Well, let's look at verse 26. Well, let's back it up a little bit. Let's look at verse 25. It says, In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. It says, When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out, For what? For fear. Notice that the disciples had fear in the midst uh, of this storm when they saw this, this uh, spirit, this figure walking out on the sea. Verse 27 but straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Verse 28, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Look at the example of the Apostle Peter in this passage. In verse 27 there, we just read of the sound words which were spoken by our Saviour to Peter. He, not just to Peter, but to the rest of the apostles. Our Saviour said to them, be of good cheer. He says, look, be happy, rejoice, don't worry. You know, no worries. We say that over here, be of good cheer. It says, it is I, be not afraid. So he's telling Peter and the rest of the apostles, he's telling them, look, don't be afraid. Don't be fearful. Some sound words coming out of the lips from our Saviour. Drop down in verse number 30. It's, uh, sorry, uh, down there in verse 29. Some more sound words. Actually, this is just one sound word. One command that the Lord gives to Peter. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is there on the sea. He's walking on the sea. Peter's there in the boat. And what's the word there in verse 29 that our Saviour says to Peter? He said, come. C-O-M-E, tells Peter uh, to come. You know, more sound words coming out of the lips uh, of our Saviour. Look at verse 30. It says, But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. So what happened here with Peter? He began to walk out on the sea, he began to walk to the Saviour. But it says there, when he saw he took his eyes off his Saviour. He took his eyes off the Lord Jesus Christ. And what was he looking at instead? They were replaced with the winds. It says, that, it says that the wind was boisterous. And as a result of that, what came his way? He began to be fearful. So, so what's happening here uh, with the Apostle Peter is that he begins to have uh, a shaky mind. He, he's, he's forgotten those sound words that were spoken to him just briefly before by the Saviour. And as a result of that, he was seeing the circumstances. He was seeing how boisterous the wind was. And as a result of that, he became fearful and began to sink. Verse 31, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? Notice here that the Lord says to him, Look, you had little faith, Peter. You had little faith. Why did you doubt? I wonder how many times the Lord has said that to us. Not just in the midst of this coronavirus, but throughout the course of our Christian lives. I wonder how many times the Lord has said to each and every one of us, O oh, thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You know, just beforehand there, there were the sound words that came forth out of the Saviour's mouth. If he, if he had uh, not just uh, uh, heard those words, but believed those words, 
what would have resulted? It would have had that sound mind, and then the wind, the trouble on the sea there wouldn't have affected him in any way, and he would have been able to walk over to a saviour. You know, we're not having to go at Peter here in any way, because I know myself, if I was in his shoes, you know, if I was in, in, in his position, I'd find myself sinking. I don't know, even know if I'd be able to get out of the boat. I'd probably be there with the rest of the uh, disciples. But I want you to see here in this passage that uh, the, the Apostle Peter, yes, there, there was fear, uh, there was little faith, and as a result of that, it resulted in him having doubts because of the circumstances uh, around him. So now let's go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 12. So this is well after the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the early chapters there in the book of Acts, the Lord's using the Apostle Peter to go and minister the Word of God, and many folk are being saved as a result of his faithful preaching. Now look at Acts chapter 12, and let's start in verse number 1. It says, Now about that time Herod the king stretch forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. So Herod, this wicked kid, king, comes and kills James. And now he sees, well, this pleased the people. I'm going to take Peter as well. And no doubt what's probably going through Peter's mind is, well, Looks as if I'm going to end up with James uh, in the grave, uh, but my soul's going to go up to glory. You know, that he just killed James and now Peter's been taken, and no doubt this was Herod's intention uh, with Peter as well. In verse number four, we read there that he was uh, placed into prison. Verse number five, we read that while Peter was in prison, there, were, there was uh, prayer being made uh, by the church for him. But look down now in, in verse number six. It says, and when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. All right, so he's in prison, no doubt waiting till the next day for him to die by the sword as well at the hands of Herod. But notice Peter's response here in verse number six. Is he like most of the other prisoners? or how most other prisoners would be in this situation, you know, would probably be up all night, not being able to sleep, you know, probably uh, sweating uh, like anything, and no doubt worrying and, and casting his mind uh, and thinking, well, oh, what's going to happen to me uh, throughout the course of the night? I know what's going to happen to me the next day. They're going to behead me or whatever, whatever other form of death is going to take place. No, what does it say that Peter's doing here in this verse? It says that Peter was sleeping knowing that more than likely the next day he was going to have the same fate that James had there in verse number two. You know, we don't see Peter awake. We don't see Peter worrying. We don't see the circumstances troubling him in any way. What do we see? We see him sleeping. So can you see the difference between Peter in Matthew chapter 14 and the Peter in Acts chapter 12. The Peter in Matthew chapter 14 had what? Had fear. But the Peter there in Acts chapter 12 had what? Had faith. You know, not faith that yes, the Lord's going to come and deliver him. We read there that yes, the Lord did deliver him. But you know, even if the Lord didn't deliver him, he still had that faith. He still had that peace uh, in his Savior. So when we go now, go back there to 1 Peter chapter 5, and when Peter states the, these words here in this verse, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, where he says, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you, Peter has learned how to do this in his Christian life. You know, it didn't happen straight away, as we saw there in Matthew chapter 14. But when we got to Acts chapter 12, something happened in his Christian life between uh, those two, that, that time frame, between that time period where he was, he learnt this principle, where he learnt this uh, precept, where he put into practice what he's writing to the believers here in, uh, in chapter 5 of his epistle. All right, so let, let's look at this verse now and let's, uh, let's go through it 
and let's see how we can put it into practice in the midst of this uh, coronavirus. So 1 Peter chapter 5, verse number 7. Firstly, I want you to see that it is a precept. And uh, what do I mean by a precept? Well, it is a command from God. You know, this is one of the hardest commands for, for us as believers to obey. You know, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. You know, that's as much of a command as thou shalt not kill, or thou shalt not bear false witness. You know, those two are pretty easy for us to, to uh, obey as believers. You know, maybe if the circumstances were different, they'd be a little bit difficult to, for us. But, you know, most days I can say that, yes, we're not guilty of, of killing anyone um, or, or bearing false witness. But what about this verse? Do we put this verse into practice every single day of our lives? You know, it's a command. He says, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. So firstly, can I say it is a, a precept. It's a command from the Lord. And look at the first word that Peter uses here. He uses the word uh, casting. Now, this is this is a fishing term. And notice, again, keep your finger there in 1 Peter chapter 5. Go back to the book of Matthew. And I want you to, to notice here how the apostle Peter sets up this, uh, this illustration to be able to support the thought uh, behind this verse uh, that he's writing. So in, in the book of Matthew, Matthew uh, chapter 4, we said that this, this, this word that he uses here in, in 1 Peter chapter 5 it is a fishing word, uh, casting. What comes to mind is, yes, casting a net, uh, casting a reel if you, if you head out fishing. And look at Matthew chapter 4 and, and look down at uh, verse number 18. And Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea. So straight away we see that, that the, the truth that Peter's trying to get across here in this passage is the same idea of when you cast a net into the sea when you go fishing. So, and he had plenty of experience in this. We know that by trade, uh, Peter was, was what? He was a fisherman. So it says, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, that's the Saviour, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and followed him. All right, so we see that the apostle Peter is a fisherman and he, he knew the, the practice, he, he knew the art of being able to cast a net uh, into the sea. Uh, go over to chapter 17 uh, of Matthew. Not just uh, casting a net. Matthew chapter 17. Uh, what else does he cast into the sea? Well, let's look at verse uh, chapter, uh, chapter 17 there and verse 27. It says, Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast a hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. When thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money, uh, and so forth. So the apostle Peter had experience casting a net into the sea and also casting a, a, a hook uh, into the sea. So go back to 1 Peter chapter 5 there. Why is that important? Well, think about it for a moment. The Apostle Peter had plenty of experience in fishing. He had plenty of experience of casting nets into the sea, casting hooks into the sea. Just read two examples there. What he realized when he was out there fishing, casting a net, he needed to make sure that when he cast that net out into the sea, when he casted that hook out into the sea, that he was not still holding on to any portion of that net. No, all of that net was released from his hands. That hook was released from his hands and where was it sent to? It was cast into the sea. There was no more of that net or that hook that he was physically holding on to. Now this will make sense a little bit later, but keep that thought in mind. So he let go of the whole net. He let go of the whole hook. Not only that, notice that it was something that he chose to do. You know, he wasn't forced to cast the net. He wasn't forced to cast the hook. You know, the hook was a command from the Lord and he obeyed the Lord. But notice that there wasn't a, a strife taking place. There wasn't any struggle taking place in any way. He wasn't forced. You know, he willingly cast that net and cast that hook uh, into the sea. So he says here, casting all. So the next word is all. How important this simple word is doesn't say casting some, 
doesn't say casting that which you cannot cope with. He writes here, casting all, A-L-L, casting all. So this same thought when we go back to, to that net and that hook being cast into the sea, that he had to fully let go of it uh, with his hands, that he wasn't holding onto the net or the hook in any way. At the same time, all of the net needs to go into the sea. You know, he can't keep some of the net on the ship there with him. All of that hook needs to go into the sea as well. Not, uh, not half of the net in the ship and the other half into the sea. No, to be able to get the, the full load of fishes uh, that come from, from casting into the sea, that whole net needs to be cast into the sea. So he's using this illustration, he's using this thought of his experience out there on the sea and casting a net in regards to those things that, 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 that cause us care. He says casting all, how important it is to cast everything, not just some, not just a small portion. So let's see from this verse firstly, that it's a precept, it's a command from the Lord, casting all. And the second word there, it says, your, your care. Notice secondly that it's personal. See here that this is very personal. This is between you and who? Your Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like it was personal for the Apostle Peter. He was the only one that came out there on the, on the sea to walk to the Saviour. Yes, he had fear, but he learned from that. And as a result there in Acts chapter 12, when he's in prison, who's the Lord dealing with over there? It's just, again, one-on-one. -on -one. It's him and Peter. So Peter's writing this from experience. It's casting all your care. So secondly, it's personal. It's between myself and my Saviour. It's between you and your Saviour. He says all your care. You know, my care may be different to your care. At the same time, the care that I have, there may be some similarities with the care you have. And obviously the context at the moment, we're talking about the, the coronavirus, you know, what could be our care today? Well, it could be the actual COVID-19. Maybe it is this idea of having to be in, in a, a form of lockdown. Maybe it is having to be as well in a form of uh, isolation. Or maybe it's a care of, of maybe not having uh, enough food or maybe not having enough money to, to, to pay um, the, the expenses, whatever they may be. Maybe it's a, it's a care of not being able to, to continue to work, not being able to ha have, have work available for you, continue to keep your job. Maybe it's a care of not being able to, to continue to, to fellowship with family or have uh, uh, time uh, uh, visits with family, uh, uh, loved ones uh, and friends that, that you're so used to. Uh, but at this present time, uh, we're not able to. Maybe it's a, it's a fear or a care of not being able to, to, to have church. You know, hence why we, we've got these videos together, because we can't physically gather, because I can't travel out uh, there to Blaney and minister to the folk out there. Maybe it's a care, care of death. Maybe that's a, that's a great care that you may be uh, holding upon. Or maybe this is another one that uh, came to mind this week. You know, it says, casting all your care. Uh, what about uh, this idea of conspiracies? You know, so much is being said out there, particularly on the internet, uh, conspiracy theories concerning this COVID-19, concerning this coronavirus, and people are putting so many videos together and coming up with these ideas here, these thoughts here, and trying to connect the dots and everything. And, you know, if you spend so much time watching those things and, and taking them in, What's going to happen? That's going to become a care. You know, I won't get into it now, but look, my recommendation is is keep your eyes and your heart and your mind focused in the book. Okay? Don't worry about all that stuff going on out there. Okay, We can't do anything about it at the end of the day. Let's just do what we're commanded to do here in this verse. You know, he says, casting all your care upon him. So we see that it's a precept. We see that it's personal, and look at the person who we're meant to cast this care upon. It says, upon him. Now, who's the him in this passage? Well, let's just look at the verse before. Verse number six, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. That's who we're meant to cast our care upon. You know, aren't you thankful 
that we're not meant to cast our care uh, upon a, a church. We're not meant to cast our care uh, upon a, a pastor, a, a preacher, a, a priest, a, a politician, uh, or a pope. But it tells us here to cast our care upon him. It's a, it's a man. It's the God man. It's the Savior. You know, it's the risen Savior that we talked about last week, the Lord Jesus Christ. And look what it says about this Savior. It says, under the mighty hands of God. He has got a mighty hand. Let me read a couple of references to you. Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 15. The Lord thy God, talking about the nation of Israel, the Lord thy God brought thee out thence, that's out of Egypt, through a what? Through a mighty hand. We're told in Psalm 136 and verse 12 that our God has a strong hand. You know, think about that for a moment or two. You know, think about the person who we're meant to cast our care upon. It's upon the God, it's upon the Savior who has a mighty hand, who has a strong hand. You know, it's not the arm of flesh. It's this hand that's created all things. It's the hand that holds all things in its rightful place. You know, it's not a hand made out of, out of wood or stone or gold or precious stones or, or anything like that that can break. You know, there's nothing too heavy that this hand cannot hold. That's in whom we're meant to cast all our care to during this time upon him, upon the mighty hand uh, of our God. And look what the latter part of the verse says. It says, casting all your care upon him. Why? For he careth for you. Notice the promise. You know, we've seen the precept. We've seen that it's personal. We've seen the person who we're meant to cast our care upon. And then notice the promise here. It says, for he careth for you. You know, it's personal there as well. You know, for you as an individual, for me, he careth for us. But can I say, without digressing too far, this promise is only for those of you who are saved, only for those of you who have realized that, yes, I am a sinner. And yes, the only way in which I can escape the damnation of hell is to put my faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ alone for salvation, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he hath saved us. Now, this promise is only for, for believers, for those that are saved. It says here, for he careth for you. Go to Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Apostle Paul's words here to the church at Corinth. Look at uh, chapter 1 and look at verse uh, number 3. Look what he says here. He says, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Just like we've just read there in 1 Peter, it tells us to cast all our care. Look what we read here. It says the God of not some comfort, not the God of only portions of comfort, but we read here he's the God of all comfort. So does that mean that our God can bring us comfort in the midst of the coronavirus? Well, according to the scriptures, yes, it does. You know, we, we read them, we're meant to meditate upon them, we're meant to hide them, we're meant to believe them. Do you believe that? It will work that effectual work. And what's that effectual work? We're talking about faith, having faith in our Savior during this time. You know, it says, and the God of all comfort. Look what Paul says in verse number four. It says, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. So this, this is the thought that Paul's getting across to the church at Corinth. He's saying, look, my um, experience in the Christian life thus far has been a lot of tribulation, has been a, a lot of trials. But I've been greatly blessed because I serve a God who is a God of all comfort. And in the midst of those difficulties, he has given me comfort. He has given me the faith. He's given me the peace that I've needed in the midst of those dark storms. And as a result of him giving me that comfort, I can now give you and show you how you can have that comfort in the midst of your trials, in the midst of your tribulations, in the midst of your storms, whatever it may be. You know, and the Apostle Paul is giving that to us today in the midst of the, the trial or the tribulation uh, of the coronavirus. Go back to 1 Peter chapter 5. We read in this verse, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. 
So when we think about the coronavirus or when we hear the word coronavirus, what I want to, to spark our hearts and our minds is when we think of it, the letter C, this verse comes to mind, that we're reminded that we ought to be casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Now, you may ask, okay, that's all good, uh, what, you've, what you've shown us from the scriptures, but how do we put it into practice? All right, well, I'm glad you asked. You know, again, just I won't sidetrack too much, but when we were having a service out there uh, in Blaney, I, I, I uh, asked a similar question like that. And one of the saints there, he, he, he said, um, tell us or, or, or how, that's what he said. He said, said how, and, and uh, he didn't actually say how, but it sounded like he, he said how, and I was able to, uh, it just worked so well with the message, all right? So uh, maybe, brother there, uh, Mark, you, you're, you're watching, and maybe you're saying, how, show us. And, uh, well, here it is, okay? I'll, I'll show you from the scriptures how uh, we're meant to do that, how we're meant to cast all our care upon him, for he careth for us. Well, we need to go back to, to, to Peter's example. You know, remember, it's, it's a fishing term, casting. So what we need to do is do what Peter did when he went out fishing. What did he do? Well, he released, he released the net. He released the net uh, into the sea. And remember, he let go of it with his hands and all of the net w was in the sea. So as believers, as Christians during this time, in the midst of, of this distress and everything that, that, that's, that, that's upon us, we need to make sure that we release the net of care. Release the net of care, whatever's causing us to be careful, whatever's uh, bringing um, a heavy burden upon us, whatever that care may be when it comes to this coronavirus, we need to make sure we release the net. Let the net go into the sea. Let it go, let, it, let all of it go. Don't keep some of it with your hands. Let it all go. And not just let it all go, but cast it all into the sea. Release it with your hands. But, you know, we don't cast it into the sea. What are we told? We're told to cast it upon our Savior, to cast it upon his mighty hands, the mighty hand of God. So we need to, firstly, we need to release the net of care. And then as a result of releasing the net of care, what did Peter do when he's out there fishing? He puts the net there in the sea. And then he eventually then retrieves the net. And what's inside the net? It's no longer an empty net, it's a net full of fish. You know, so likewise with us, we release the net of care, but then we retrieve the net. And what's inside that net? It's no longer care that's found in that net, but it's comfort. Comfort from God. It, we read there in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, but if we cast all your care upon him, it says, for he careth for you. We, we, we want uh, the comfort but the only way in which we can have that comfort is firstly, we need to release the net of care and then we'll be able to retrieve the full net and that net is then filled with comfort. You know, we need to release first before we can retrieve. Now to put that into practice, let's finish off in Philippians chapter four. How do we put that thought into practice? Philippians chapter 4, look at verse number 6. Paul, speaking to the church at, here at Philippi, he says, Be careful for nothing. There's that word that pops up again that we just read there in our verse in 1 Peter. He says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. What is that? That's releasing the net of care into the sea. How do we do that? Well, we need to cast it upon our Savior. How do we do that? Just by praying, by telling the Lord, Lord, this is a care of mine. This is a care uh, during this time, and I'm casting it upon you. I'm casting into your, your strong hands. I'm letting go of this net of care, and I'm giving it, I'm placing it in your hands. Look what the verse says, though. But it says, with thanksgiving. You know, can we be thankful for this coronavirus? You know, can we be thankful for the care that we have? He says, not just prayer and supplication, but with thanksgiving as well. Be thankful for what it is that we're casting into the mighty hands uh, of our God. We do that by prayer. So that is releasing the net of care. And then as a result, verse number seven, look what he says. 
and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, should keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. When we release the net, we then retrieve the net, and we no longer have that care, but we have that comfort. And this verse says, not just comfort that we've seen, but we are given the peace of God. The peace of God, which says here, which passeth all understanding. And what does it say? It says it will keep our hearts and our minds through who? Not through a church, not through a man, but through the man, Christ Jesus. So during this time, let's not lose focus. Let's continue to strive to have that sound mind. And the way we're going to have that sound mind is by filling ourselves up with sound words. Coronavirus, let us see. What's the verse? Let's just turn to it one more time. Uh, I've mentioned it so many times, you think we would probably already have memorized it by now. But Peter says here, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Can I encourage you this week to read that verse each day? As a result of reading it each day, meditate upon it. Hide it in your heart, whether you're, you're able to work or whether you're, you're out there in the garden or whether you're doing the washing or whether you're doing the cooking or whatever it may be. Hide it in your heart, but make sure you believe it. As a result of believing it, putting into practice, that effectual work will be worked uh, from the inside out. And what's that work we're trying to get across during this time? It's just to have faith in the Lord, forsaking everything. I trust him in comparison to having fear. So when he says to cast all your care upon him for he careth for you, make sure you release the net of care. And then when you retrieve, remember it's no longer a net of care, but there's the fruit of comfort and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding. May the Lord continue to to guide you and and bless you in the coming week. Uh, Just be encouraged that uh, we continue to to pray for each and every one of you. And I trust that... um, uh, these words will continue to to bear that fruit from the inside out, you know, not just for ourselves, but so that we as testimonies of the Lord Jesus Christ will be able to, to minister to others. You know, there's so many people out there that are fearful, that are struggling, and yet, what are we promised? We're promised that, that sound mind, we're promised that faith, and then we can tell folk that, look, it's not my strength, It's not anything special about me, but it's all about my Saviour and his sound words. May the Lord bless you.